Hello, welcome to Insights for Health with Dr. Ree. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about functional foods that suppress cancer cell activities or suppress the uh, multiplying of cancer cells. Very first one, um, the research that I'm gonna share with you is anti-proliferative and antioxidant activities of common vegetables. This is from the journal called Food Chemistry. Uh, lung cancer uh, can be suppressed by uh, here we have a box of most common box that represents the most common functional food items that actually suppress the cancer cell activity. So very first one is garlic, leek, onions, Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, and so forth. Uh, for breast cancer is the next one. Uh, actually we have a little more choice here. Um, garlic, leek, onion, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, and broccoli, radish, kale, yellow onion, and then so on and so forth. And so if you actually have family history of breast cancer, these are the things that you wanna be a little bit more attentive to. Next one is prostate cancer, and we have a wider range of uh, vegetables that we can choose from that actually suppress uh, cancer cell, prostate cancer cell proliferation or multiplying. And once again, it's garlic, Brussels sprouts, all the way to, we have um, even potatoes, eggplant. Uh, next one is stomach cancer, and this is uh, very common among Asians uh, because they tend to have H. pylori infection positive plus very, very salty diet. And if you actually look at this, uh, once again, garlic is at the, uh, at the forefront, and then we have leek, and onions, and Brussels sprouts, and so on and so forth. Next one is uh, pancreatic carcinoma, and pancreatic cancer is one of the most um, dreaded uh, cancers because once diagnosed, uh, most people don't live more than a year, and within three months, uh, people pass away. And once again, we have garlic, leek, and Brussels sprouts, and onions, and kale as uh, the most effective functional food that can suppress the multiplying or multiplication of, of pancreatic cancer. Next one is glioblastoma. Uh, glioblastoma is a cancer of the brain for uh, elderly and once again garlic is at the front. Garlic, leek, Brussels sprouts, beetroot, uh, cabbage and broccoli and these are the things that uh, we need to be exposed to more so that we can suppress cancer cells. Next one is actually cancer for younger children, and this is a cancer of the brain for children. And if um, children uh, are very, very um, uh, attentive, attentive and eating um, garlic and leek and onion, then they can actually prevent uh, this cancer from happening. Uh, it's not very common, but if they like to include uh, some of these things in their food, and maybe the parents or the mom can actually uh, hide these foods inside uh, a, a dressing or a sauce, then you can actually prevent uh, medulloblastoma. Uh, next one is um, a picture of Brussels sprouts, and Brussels sprouts is not something, uh, it's not a favorite of too many people, but uh, when we actually made Brussels sprouts with lots of uh, raisins and nuts with uh, olive oil in the oven, and these actually are delicious. And these are excellent foods for suppressing food, uh, food uh, functional food items that you can see here that are very, very effective in suppressing cancer cell activity as you, uh, you saw earlier, earlier in the graphs. And kidney cancer, um, actually there aren't that many, but once again, leek and garlic. Uh, for kidney cancer, leek was actually a little more powerful than garlic. Um, and as you see some of these um, slides, um, if you look at this, this is basically the top uh, functional foods that kill cancer cells. We have garlic, Brussels sprouts, leek, onions, uh, purple cabbage, broccoli, and a beet, there's a beet spread on top of the bread here with, along with some avocados and uh, I think we have some tomatoes there too. So these are the things that you can include in your diet to suppress cancer cells. And it's a good news that we don't have to necessarily take um, 
chemical that's like a strong uh, chemotherapeutic agent that actually has a lot of side effects. This is everyday lifestyle that can actually suppress cancer cells, not in a huge amount, but uh, every little actually uh, makes a big difference if you do this every single day, right? Um, so garlic is, uh, seems to be the champion of uh, a lot of these cancers, champion functional foods that suppress cancer cells. And uh, what's actually activated in garlic is uh, alleine, and alleine becomes allicin, and uh, it's activated by the enzyme called alleinase, and alleinase actually is activated when garlic is crushed and exposed to air. So if you crush it and then it get it exposed to air for about 10 minutes, then uh, most of the crushed alleine actually becomes allicin, which is the uh, smelly anti-cancer agent in garlic. And so this is what makes garlic really, really strong uh, functional food uh, against cancer. But a lot of times people have a hard time with the smell. So uh, once allicin is created, allicin becomes very heat stable, so you can actually cook it. And when you cook it, uh, you actually make a lot of acetylcysteine, and this one does not have smell, and it still has anti-cancer activity. So if you want to cook a garlic from scratch without crushing it, then you still make acetylcysteine. But if you crush it, you'll make some of, some of uh, allicin and some into acetylcysteine. So you can actually uh, eat, eat it either way. But if you want no smell, uh, you probably want to probably cook it or get it fermented. And you still have uh, quite a bit of the benefit from garlic. So crushing garlic is a very, very important part of your uh, anti-cancer lifestyle. But if you don't want to crush it and make it into a very smelly anti-cancer agent, you can actually cook it, but you can still, uh, without the smell, make the anti-cancer agent as well. So you can do either or or both. So this is how you eat garlic. Now, uh, in Chinese character, um, Chinese character um, has a lot of uh, wisdom that we can learn from. And this uh, Chinese character means law. And law is a very harsh and hard term that we don't want to really um, uh, look at too much. But if you look at the meaning of law in Chinese character, then it's much easier to follow. Uh, it actually means uh, flowing like water. So this part is actually means water, and this part means to go. So literally it means to go like water. But uh, since water flows when it goes, I just kind of translate it to flowing like water. Um, and so when you actually keep the principle, the law of health, um, as we flow in our life, right? Flow is actually a very specific term for happiness. Um, and if you're able to flow instead of um, uh, constantly just forcing ourselves to go, we are actually much happier in our progress in life or in our fighting with um, cancer. There's a twin study, and twin studies are usually very, very interesting because the twins actually share identical genes. And even though they actually share identical genes, their health outcome or their lifestyle outcome may be completely different depending on uh, how they decided to live, right? So this is actually a study that actually shows uh, two um, twins, one with a scar in the middle of uh, his uh, abdomen and one without. This person actually had a surgery for stomach cancer, and this person, this one on the right, did not. And um, as you can, you can see even better right here. And if you actually look at the DNA uh, analysis when they were three years of age, they're pretty much about the equal, about equal. But about 50 years later, depending on the choices that they made, made in their life, uh, the one on the left is very different from one on the right. Um, the different, uh, actually, color spectrum shows how their lifestyle was completely different. Now, in this case, um, the twin that did not get cancer said he actually lived a life of openness. And this is uh, how uh, his mind worked. And he said he was constantly living a life that was positive in spite of, so he used a lot of, um, in his life, a lot of times he mentioned 
and in, uh, to himself and to other people, in spite of this or in spite of that, I am going to live a positive life. Second, uh, he always considered stress as an opportunity to grow. And so stress was a good thing for him. And it, the stress did not affect him in a negative way. And finally, he always thought win-win. And so even if he had somebody like uh, an enemy-like um, person that he had to deal with, he always thought of um, the ways to actually have a win-win relationship or win-win outcome. So these three uh, things that actually he kept, uh, he abide, abided by all his life, actually helped him make choices that, that did not affect his genes in a negative way. And we cannot prove that this is exactly why he did not get stomach cancer, but most likely he had more resilience in fighting cancer. So this is something that we can learn from in this twin study. So I would like to actually uh, uh, have you think about the types of foods. Um, of course, garlic was number one, but garlic is not the only thing. There's a lot of rainbow colored foods that actually can fight and suppress cancer cells. And there are positive mindfulness, the thought processes that can actually prevent you from getting chronic diseases like cancer. So until next time, eat, eat well and think positive.